Uh, Calvin has some questions, so thank you for the Super Chats, Calvin. Uh, tech, you said running at stock is best, uh, but in my use case, my 3950X runs way better after removing the power limits in PBO. Am I wrong about this? If I leave it at stock, I notice severely inconsistent frame pacing, particularly when my games utilize 12 plus cores. But if I remove power limits, smooth as butter, plus it stays at 4.2 or core versus 3.8. I have an MSI X470 Pro Carbon. What are your, yes, there we go. Because the next one is Ghost in the Machine. For those of you watching this live, welcome. For those of you watching this clip on Bite Size Tech, this is a clip out of a live stream that we do weekly over on our main channel, Tech Deals. I continue to be amazed how many people on Bite Size Tech don't realize that's not our only channel. I continue to see comments over there from people who say, who are these people and why are they making these clips about technology? What What's their experience? How do they know anything? Uh, we've been on YouTube for five years. <laughs> I've been doing this professionally for 26 years and doing it as a hobby for 37. I hear that if you read the video description, there might be information in there. The first three lines of the video description. You don't even have to hit show more. It's right in the top. People are funny. Mm. In any case, let's answer Calvin's question because when we put this clip on Bite Size Tech, this conversation will not be part of the thumbnail and the title of it. Okay, Calvin, you're gonna be a, a clip. <clears throat> Calvin, you're gonna be a star. Okay, so... But this should be captured all the way from when you read the question. So that's the trick, not this part. So here's the deal. Different motherboards work differently. Now you have a decent motherboard and I'm surprised you're having this issue. I'm wondering if you're running an older BIOS. I'm wondering if you've changed something without knowing it in the BIOS. It's odd because you have an MSI X470 Pro Carbon motherboard. That is not a $79 junk motherboard. That That's a, well, okay, it's several, it's a previous revision now, but it's that's not a an El Cheapo motherboard. I have tested Zen 2 on a wide variety of boards, 300 series, 400 series, and 500 series. We have tested it on the B boards and the X boards. I have a Ryzen 9 3950X, a, 15, uh, a 3900X, a 3700X. We even have the completely ridiculous Ryzen 7 3800X. <laughs> we do. All of the X chips going all the way down to the 3300X, the Ryzen 3, and the 3600X Ryzen 5 all typically run at about 4.2 gigahertz on all the cores and threads in a typical gaming environment. And what I mean by that is the kind of workload that is not using every last ounce of your CPU, not Blender, not Cinebench. Blender and some other type of content creation programs truly will use 100% of the chip and not just a utilization aspect, but they'll really actually use all the chip. Your temperatures run hotter, your power consumption is higher running Blender than it is playing Cyberpunk 2077 or what have you. So in full render workloads, most of the Zen 2 chips at stock speeds typically run at 4.0 gigahertz. I have seen this be the case on 300, 400, and 500 series boards. This is stock out of the box, zero configuration changes other than turning on XMP or DOCP if you have an ASUS board in the BIOS. Now, it is worth noting, the chips will turbo faster if under a very light load, but rarely, and they will certainly slow down a bit if they are temp limited, thermal limited, you have insufficient cooling, etc. But in most gaming workloads, all of the Zen 2 X chips run at 4.2. Now that's not the stock speed, that's not the range given by AMD, but I have seen it for the past 18 months so consistently, I accept it as a flat given. If you're not seeing it, and specifically his, his follow-up comments, I we actually chatted before the stream started because he was asking me these questions. He said, um, the clock speed is very inconsistent and I see a lot of frame stuttering if I don't go in and manually adjust the limits. First, is your BIOS updated? And this advice applies to everybody watching. 
if your 300, 400, or 500 series motherboard is not updated, if you're running a one, two, three-year-old BIOS, by all means, update it. Now, whether or not you should put the very newest BIOS on is a topic for another time, but I will caution you, you wanna actually look at what the BIOS does because there are some beta BIOSes and there are some setups where like, the 400 series boards have gotten a beta BIOS to support 500 series, mm -hmm. but to do so in their limited 16 megabyte or 128 megabit BIOS chip, the manufacturers have had to selectively cull or remove support for older CPUs. Some of those BIOSes cannot be reverted once done, meaning you can't flash back to an older version. Correct. Some boards you can. Some you can't. So I offer a word of caution here that before you blindly download whatever the latest beta BIOS is for your motherboard, look and see what the notes are and what it supports and what it does. Because what you might want to do is update to the latest BIOS minus one. If they just came out with a BIOS four days ago and it adds some experimental features. They added uh, resize bar support, otherwise known as SAM. They, they put uh, Zen 3 support on 400 series boards and you have a Zen 2 chip. You might wanna look at the BIOS list because they leave them all up. You can see like sometimes there'll be 20 BIOSes. Don't you work. might look at the newest one and go, I'll take the one that was a month ago because that one has been out in the wild for a month and if it's still posted, that's probably the stable one. Mm -hmm. But if that updates you from a two year old BIOS, you're getting 90 plus percent of the improvement with 10% of the risk. You don't always wanna be on the bleeding edge. So do, I just, I have to insert that word of caution because of the shenanigans with the whole 400 Zen 3 stuff that's going on with the BIOSes. It'll sort itself out probably in time, but be aware. If you do have your newest BIOS or really close to within the past three, four, five, six months, that's close enough, and it's still doing it, you yeah. have an odd duck of a motherboard or something else is wrong in your system. He says that the BIOS is one before the last beta. It shouldn't be doing that. You have a good premium board. That was not the $79 Walmart El Cheapo special. That, that's a good, almost 200, that's a, that's a $200 motherboard. Exactly. Now, from a practical perspective, if lifting your PBO limits lets it run at 4.2, do that and then game and enjoy your computer. Because in all practical Reality, when I put a Ryzen 9 3900X on my Asus uh, ROG Strix X470-F motherboard, it runs at 4.2 gigahertz stock out of the box. I don't have to make any changes. Do you know why it does that? The board is automatically lifting the limits. In fact, if I go in and force PBO on, nothing changes. Hmm. Do you know why? Because the board's doing it anyway. The board doesn't... Every motherboard manufacturer can override the defaults and make custom settings as they see fit. Right. And so effectively what a lot of boards are doing is they're just turning on PBO anyway. Even though you're not selecting it, they are. I'm not gonna say they're cheating, although several motherboard companies, <coughs> ASUS, got in trouble a few years ago when MCE, which is the Intel version of PBO, a multi-core enhancement, they auto turned it on and some of the benchmark results from YouTubers were different. I think it was Gamers Nexus and Jay's Two Cents, uh, not calling, not them. It's just, they got boards with PBO turned on and other YouTubers got PBO with, uh, no, MCE, sorry, Intel, multi-core enhancement. On multi-core enhancement, simple example, i7-8700K. Right. Out of the box stock with sufficient cooling, it runs at 4.3 gigahertz. Turn on MCE, it runs at 4.7. Period, dot the end, that's what it does. It's much simpler than, than on AMD side. Some motherboard companies were forcing MCE on at stock default settings without changing it, and others weren't. And so some, when the chips came out, some YouTubers tested stock and got different results than other YouTubers who tested stock, but on a different motherboard. Mm. Now they actually, because of the Krishnuffle about this, they actually released BIOS updates that reverted that and forced MCE off unless you turned it on manually. Oh, Because of the, the blowback from, because it was seen as cheating. It was yeah. making the motherboards look better than then. it is. Newsflash, motherboards don't determine your performance, your CPU does. Assuming the settings are roughly the same and the clock speeds are the same, there's no difference in performance between the motherboards worth 1% maybe. 
testing variances and repeatability of tests and background tests have more impact. Motherboard choice doesn't matter. Motherboards are about features. Correct. Isn't AMD fun? <laughs> It just is what it is. So hopefully that answers your question. And if anybody else is watching and you're not getting 4.2 gigahertz on Zen 2 and in the 4.6 to 4.7 gigahertz range on Zen 3, Three. turn PBO on.